Hey, I'll just leave the throttle where it is. It should start right up. Turn up. What year is this? Sorry? What year is this one? 46. 46. Yep. Let's start by showing you around the cockpit. It should look pretty familiar. Um, one thing about stepping on a float, you always want to step pretty much in front of the strut. Because if we go back here, hopefully it will rock back on us. Yeah, kind of tip back. Don't want to do that. Okay. So just step in front of the strut. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now once it's in the water, it doesn't matter. But of course on land it's a little different. So you'll be in the back. It's gonna be your typical stick, nothing fancy about it. Rudder pedals down here. Trims on the left side, fuel shut off, throttle. You should be familiar with all that. Sounds like you've flown a J3 before. They're great. Um Water rudders are going to be the one major difference that you haven't seen before. Okay. This is your water rudder retraction handle. See, I drop it down and on the floor, water rudders go down. So all the way down like that, that yeah. means they're down. Just throw it on the floor. Got it. Up and on the hook, that's water rudder zone. Okay. I'll be doing your curb view for you. Perfect. Just ask me when you want it hot, ask me when you want it cold. Okay. I won't mess with you. If you tell me what to do, I'll do it. Perfect. Oil, we keep it three quarts. And this is a C85? Yeah, it's a C85 Rally 200 crank. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. So is that, what does that make that, like 90 horse? 90. 90, yeah. okay. But yeah, if you want to get, go ahead and toss your stuff in there, your headset will plug into the little intercom box up there. Perfect. Intercom is not great in this plane. We got to yell at each other a little bit. That's fine. No. Not a big deal at all. That's why I like to give it a little shake on the wing strut look for any sort of crinkling in the fabric. Perfect. And then we got, uh, next is left float, general condition and pump. Yeah, so we'll go over to the left float okay. on this side. We're not going to pump it right now, we'll get that all done at the end. But as far as general condition, we're looking for any obvious signs of stress, any buckles within the metal, missing rivets, missing bolts, anything like that. And these are Aqua 1500s? Correct. Okay. 1500s. Perfect. And then uh, engine fuel sump, drain, yeah, so highlight in we go grab our fuel sump. We already got a full tank of gas, full 12 gallons. Perfect. Let's grab that. Alright, so when they put the different engine in these, the sumps no longer line up. So I'll show you how to do this the first time. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of angle it in, and then I look at it through the exhaust hole. Got it. And I can find it there, and I can get fuel. Just like that? Yep. Low and in color, no sediment, and no I mean, water at the bottom. Being obviously in water and in a humid place, have you seen water contamination yeah. pretty frequently down here? Uh, it's not frequent. Okay. But we get water every once in a while. 
Now there's another sump as well for the tank. It's kind of a two-man job, so if you want to come around here on the float, yep. what you're going to do is take this hose okay. and just push up on it and do it self like that. You got it. Can you tell me when. All right, go for it. That's good. And once again, blue, no water at the bottom. Okay. Sediment. Then we always pour on the float, get in the habit of it, because when we're in the water, we don't want to pour it in the lake. Oh yeah. Pouring it on the float, it'll evaporate into the air. Oh, ah, okay. All right, what else is on that checklist? All right, next one is uh, struts and bracing wires. So Looking for loose. Wing struts are pretty obvious where to get them a good shake with for fabric. Okay. Bracing wires are these wires here. This is what tensions the aircraft. So if one of these is loose, then it can actually make the aircraft fly crooked because it'll be pulling the float sideways. Things don't line up anymore. So I'll make sure all these are tight. Okay. Front and the back. Tight and tight. There you go. We're also just looking at all of our float rigging while we're here. All of our bolts are tight and in place. We'll go do the same thing on the other side. Okay. We've got a jack in place, tight, same bracing wire as we were checking earlier. Okay. So. Perfect. Okay. All good. Awesome. Next one is um, pedo and static. That's your pedo. That's all there is to it. Boy, that's fancy. Static vents to the back of the gauges. Okay. Nothing fancy. Perfect. Uh, next one is left wing control services. So you can't check the ailerons when you're on the water. Luckily, we can do it here. It's going to bind up because it's, the back stick is currently planted in the front seat. That's understandable. But we can see it's got good movement in them. And the uh, next one is left water rudder, cables, pulleys, and horn, and tum buckles. Yeah. So we're checking our water rudders. We want to check for freedom of movement. Make sure they're not binding up on top. Then as we check our cables, pulleys, looking at the front ones, then I like to follow this one back. This one's going to take us back to our rudder core. This is what connects our air rudder to our water rudder. Okay. So when we move our feet in the airplane, we move the air rudder, as you'd expect. That in turn moves this rudder horn on the bottom. Cables then bring it down to the rudders. These springs are here so that if we jam up a water rudder, either mechanically or due to vegetation, we can still fly the airplane. Okay. still have air rudder. It takes a lot more force. but. It still works to some degree. Yep. And then uh, stabilizer trim. So trim, you've flown a cub before, you know yeah. that we don't have a trim tab. You gotta make sure your jack screw is nice and tight. Okay. Nothing loose going on in there. It's not skipping or anything. Perfect. And uh, elevator check. Is there one assigned to it with like the stitching? Oh, okay. So yeah, just your typical elevator check, looking for free and clear movement. Taking a look inside what little inspection area we have. Okay. No obstructions, nothing loose. Perfect. Good. Awesome. And then we got uh, rudder and rudder cables. Okay. Rudder cables are here. Rudder we already checked. I'll move that water rudder in a second. It'll let us actually find this thing. And then look for a rudder horn, loose or crack. There you go. Perfect. It's not loose, not cracking. Like full tank. There is no numbers anywhere on it. There is no five gallons, 10 gallons, anything like that. Perfect. It's just visual. And then oil quantity, you want three to four quarts, which. Yep. So up here, 90 degree turn, stick pops out. We are right at three. I don't want to put any more in just because it's kind of cold. Yeah. So wouldn't get any oil tub. And then last for the pre flight uh, outside is the prop. Check for nicks, dents, or defects. Yeah. Nicks are off. You see down on that blade, everything looks good there. Yep. I got this one up here. Everything looks good. One little nick from water. I'll show you what that looks like. You see there's a little dent in the front edge of that prop. Wow. That's All I'm because doing. of water. That's just water. Yep. So wow. that's why whenever we're idling, I'm going to tell you to keep the stick back. Yeah. Keep the prop away from the water. Okay.
just like that. Just like that, that same way. Okay. Any questions on that? No. We're gonna be wearing our headsets today. Uh, to talk to each other, we'll have this intercom, the volume's adjustable here for you if you need it. Just speak into the microphone, we'll be able to hear each other. Excellent. We will be able to listen to the CTAF through this radio here. So we can adjust the volume on that knob. And then... All right, we're gonna go ahead and go mags hot for me. But yeah, you focus on keep that stick back. Use your feet to steer at that tower and put the water rotors down as soon as you can. You got it. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. It looks like a shorter green ladder. Clear prop. I got my feet on the floor, keep the stick back centered, and see this thing weather raining into the wind. Wow, it does it that fast. Yep, and this is only about seven knots or so. Wow, okay, that makes... So, I mean... So yeah, that's the wind. The discrepancy there is I couldn't tell where the, actually where the wind is, so how, what's your best way... I watch which way they're moving. Now you see how we're going into them, we're not going with them? It takes a little bit of seeing, and it's easier to do from the air because we can identify the yeah. glassy band. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for now, go ahead and put those water rudders down. We're going to get turned around so we can keep yep. taxi. Water rudders are down. It's big. And this one is called the step taxi. Right, this right. is step taxi. Okay. So we're looking for a power setting where we basically don't need any back pressure on the stick, but the nose is still at this attitude. Okay. Yep. Water rudders are up. Water rudders are up. Stick is back, so I'm going to go for the first one, we'll go full power, once I'm on step, I'll pull it back. Clear, ahead. There's the second rise, I let my nose down. Now that my nose is down, I start pulling my power out. So now we're on plane. Yep, we're on plane. I see there's that double rise. Yeah. Uh, Initially, that makes sense. Yeah, you can see, I found a good power setting so that my nose is at the same attitude it was before. Okay. And I don't need any back pressure. You can see if I put too much power in, the nose is going to start falling down, and I would need back pressure to keep it up. If I put in too little power, what you're going to notice is the nose starts to come up on its own. So basically, we're falling off plane is what's occurring right now. See how that nose came up? Okay. So I can catch that by adding in power to bring it back down and going back to the power setting a lot. Now we can also make turns while on step. So I'm going to do a left hand turn here. Kind of like in a steep turn, you do want to add a touch of power because we are creating more drag. Okay. We do a very nice gentle turn on the rudders. Our ailerons are only used to keep the wing level. Okay. So I have a little bit of wind off the right side, so I'm going to put a touch of right aileron just to hold it down into that. And now we're in the downwind. We can step taxi in any direction, but we can only turn in certain directions. Okay. So we only turn from the upwind into the downwind, and then just wait for it to take off. Got it. And then we're going to do a right-hand traffic pattern. Right here. We'll do a 500 foot downwind, okay. and then you'll come in for a land. All right, cars, carburetor heat is off. Carburetor heat's off. Area is clear. Water rudders are retracted, and mm -hmm. stick all the way back. All right. You ready? Yep. Nice job. Start looking down at your waves. See if you can figure out which way is truly downwind. I 
this. So that looks really good to me, because we look like we're lined up perpendicular to them. So that's what we're looking for. And you see those little white streaks down there? Yes. Those are the wind streaks they talked about. Line up with those and you'll have yourself lined up with the wind. Now watch your altitude. Watch your altitude? Yeah, we're, we want to be at 500. Alright, now we're at beam our aim point, right? So we do our cars check. Oh, we got off. Air is clear. Water rotors are up. Water rotors are up. You want your power about 2,000, actually. About 1,800 to 2,000. Alright, then you can go ahead and turn pace. Start getting your airspeed around 60 miles an hour. 60. Going too fast. A little bit. Good call. We got the lake made. We can go ahead and leave that power out. All the way out. All the way out. Idle. Because you got the lake, right? So let's just close that. Now focus on holding 60. I'll get slow. Put that nose down. Now when you get close to the water, start a nice gentle flare. Don't try to land the airplane, just try to be as close to the water as you can and not let it touch. Then all of a sudden you're going to be in it and it's going to be a great land. How'd you like that? That was great. Good I explanation. I got your car feet off now. Car feet off? Yep, that looked really good. Only things, be a little more ready when you're downwind okay. so that when you come and beam the point, you can be ready to do things a little quicker. So for the next two days, I practiced and perfected my takeoffs, my landings, my taxing abilities, as well as my docking abilities. And when I look back at this experience, I learned so much, not just from becoming a better pilot, but really learning the technicalities of how to fly a seaplane properly. Skill sets such as rough water takeoffs, glassy water landings, as well as a one of my favorite types of procedures, which was a confined area takeoff. A great example is this is an area where you brought a seaplane down and landed. You wouldn't have enough room to take off directly across the lake. So you'd have to actually fly in a circular procedural turn onto one float and depart the area in a circular type of flying control layout. It was a fascinating wealth of knowledge that I earned from this. But at the end of the day, I set an objective, and that was to earn the coveted seaplane rating on my pilot's license. So I actually had to fly with an FAA designated pilot examiner, also known as a DPE. And this is a true check ride, just like any other rating you would get, whether it's pilot's license, a instrument rating, a commercial rating, even an ATP. You have to fly with an examiner. And that involved perfecting and showing the DPE that my skill set to fly a seaplane was up to FAA standards. A little bit nerve-wracking at first, but then I realized that I was at the controls of a 1946 J3 Cub on floats, and that in itself made me smile in that moment. And at the end of the day, I came home smiling, knowing that I had passed my check ride and earned a seaplane rating on my pilot's license. Memories were made here, experiences were learned and I look back at moments like this and it's these little objectives and goals that we set for ourselves as pilots whether that's learning a new skill making new memories or friends but at the end of the day we're growing as the aviators and for me that was a very special moment to just think over and realize 
of when you set your mind to something that you can truly accomplish it. The only problem with this type of scenario now is that all I do day in day out is think about owning a seaplane. And well, as much as my mind thinks that would be cool, my bank account definitely disagrees. Thanks for watching this episode of flying a 1946 Piper J3 Cub on floats. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I really appreciate all my viewers uh, down in the comments and talking about experiences that they've had, aircraft that they've flown. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be out making these videos. So at the end of the day, thank you for taking the time to watch these episodes, and have a wonderful rest of your week.